This is React Casts, episode 4, Context, part 1. I wish context was a smooth and straightforward topic, but it's not. It's one of those concepts you think you understand 100%, but even so often you will find yourself dealing with annoying issues crawling out of the woodwork. Then, you will be spending a lot of time mapping all of the nooks and crannies those issues have been nesting. This is why this is a two-part video. I will start with the basics, and along the way I will point a few potential problems. On the next video I will show how to deal with these potential problems and build a robust solution. Let's start with this React project here. It has many nested components. Panel, internal panel, and a content panel, with some texts and a button. Let me show it on a browser. What I want to do here is add localization to my app to be able to display these texts in different languages. I already have JSON files for each language here. Both contain identical keys, but each one has the corresponding strings in a different language. Here I have English and Portuguese. I will use the app component here as an example. For simplicity, I will import both JSON files here. Import en from locales en.json, import Portuguese. Uh, and I'll also create an object containing all locales. The idea is that, depending on the current selected language, I will pass along the object containing the correct localized strings. Now, the big issue here is, I have to pass this locale object as props all the way through the component tree, to each and every component. Man, that's a lot of props passing everywhere, from component to component. I would have to pass it down to panel, like locale equals locale.english, then, inside panel, I'll have not only to declare the prop types here, but also to keep passing it down. So, locale, this.props.locale. You know where this is going. It may not be a big deal in my example project with three components, but it will certainly become an issue as the app grows. This is not the solution we are looking for. Let me undo everything here. This is actually a very good use case for React's context. Context makes it possible to pass data to components deep into the component tree without needing intermediate components to know about it. Amazing, right? Too good to be true? You betcha! The thing is, context should be used sparingly and prudently. For one, by breaking the common data flow pattern in React, it can lead to applications that are harder to reason about. Additionally, it is an experimental API and it has a problematic relationship with should component update. These topics will be covered on the next video, but the main takeaway is, context is useful for global variables that never change or rarely change during the user session. It's not an alternative to props for your app data, but it is a good solution for things like localization and theming, for example. Now, there are two things we need to do to implement context that can be accessed by any children, grandchildren, and on and on. First, we need to declare child context types, which works basically like prop types, but in this case declaring which properties are accessible by children. So static, child context types, and I will declare a locale property as a plain object. Second, we need to implement a getChildContext method, which actually sets the values for these properties. To begin, I'll just use English here. Good! Now, our app component is providing a locale context to anyone who might be interested in consuming it. Next, I'll go to the grandchild component in our hierarchy, content panel, to get this locale data from the context. Any child that wants to consume a context must first whitelist the properties it wants to access via context types property. Again, it's similar to prop types, so static context types locale prop types dot object. 
In my render method, I can now change these hard-coded texts for locale.header, locale.text, and locale.buttonlabel. Let's try this on the browser. Visually, nothing changed, but now these texts are configurable. For example, if I get back to my app and change the locale to Portuguese, now we have a localized content. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You want links so the user can change the language, right? All right. I will add a local state to my app component with the current locale, starting in English. Then I will create a change locale method, which accepts a locale as parameter and sets the new state. Get child context will be automatically called when the state changes. Finally, I will add a nav element here with some links to call the method passing English or Portuguese. Let's test this again. Awesome, it works. Now, remember that updating the context is fragile, as the updates might not get propagated to all children if any component in the middle of the hierarchy implements should component update. On the next episode, we will investigate this issue in more details, and I will show you how to make the context data propagate reliably. You will also learn how to architect the application in a way that it is easier to update if the API changes, because it is experimental. You just watched an episode of React Casts. The source code is available on GitHub, look for the link on the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe, you will be notified when the next episodes are up. I also want to give a big thanks to our sponsor Netlify, a host solution with a global CDN network and a lot of nice stuff. Check them out at netlify.com. See you on the next episode.